In this video, I want to talk about a couple of net implementations and demonstrate how we configure them. So let's first start by understanding our topology. We have our FortiGate connected to the internet via the ISP router. The public facing interface is 10.160.10.254. And also the interface facing our DMZ zone is 172.160.30.254. Our MSF server is Dot 10. So let's do some verifications to make sure that we have reachability end to end. Gonna start from the FortiGate gate and try to reach the internet. We have internet connection and even name resolution works. Now let's try to ping our um, meta spreadable server 172.160.30.10. And we have reachability there. Going to our Metasploitable server itself. We won't have internet connectivity until we do our net and security policy allowing this traffic. I'm going to leave this running. Let's hop on to the FortiGate. Going to the security policy. Let's create our first file policy allowing outbound traffic to the internet. The incoming interface would be our DMZ interface. Outgoing would be our internet interface. The source would be Say everything, destination, all, all services. The outgoing interface is always the default choice. So I'm going to leave it like this just so that we can have some comparisons. Now our ping has started working. Now let's have a look at the session table to see how the net translation is actually happening right now. I'm going to list the session table, the contents of the session table, but I'm only going to filter using the 172.1630, which would basically give me the output that I'm looking for um, from our DMZ zone. We can see here that we have the source of 172.1630.10 and the destination is 1.1.1.1. And this has been translated to 10.254. And if we check our network interfaces, we'll see that 172, no, um, 10.160.10.254 is our physical interface on, on the firewall facing the public, facing the internet. Now, this is the one implementation of net, um, the, the most common implementation of net. Now, if we want to translate this as a small subset of our network going out, um, you might come to a situation where you have to uh, create or isolate different sections of your network and use different IP address pools before your traffic breaks out. And the way we do that is we go to IP pools and you define your IP pool here. So this one I'm just going to call SNET, let's say 10. And what we want to do, say, is um, to use the type overload. We do have um, different types of net here, but I'm only going to focus on overload in this example, as well as one-to-one. -one. So starting with overload, what we want to do is 10, to use 10.160.10.10 10 to 10.160.10.19, basically the entire 10 range. What this means is that a single IP would have up to about 65,000 ports um, to overload inbound traffic. When that is exhausted, it'll jump onto the next IP address and that IP address will have um, 65,000 um, ports as well. And so the bigger your network, the more IP addresses you're going to need. But in this case, just as a demonstration, I'm, I'm going to use um, 10.160.10.10 up to 10.19. Now let's go back to our security policy. So now, instead of using the outgoing interface, let's use the dynamic IP, the dynamic IP pool, which we just created. So now let's generate some more traffic from our Metaspreadable server.
Again, going back to the firewall to look at the session table. And this time we can see that the same source has been translated into a different um, IP address. It's no longer using the exit interface of our public facing um, network interface, um, which means that our IP pool is actually working now. Now, this explains the outbound source net for our Metas provider server going out to the internet. Now, the next type of net that I want to demonstrate is inbound traffic coming from the internet somewhere um, where we want to present services hosted on the server. Um, we create a virtual IP for that. And going back to our FortiGate, we would go to virtual IPs and then create a new virtual IP. Our outside external IP address would be 10.160.10. Let's say for argument's sake, we want to use 100. And this address is going to be translated to the internal address 172.16.30.10, which is the internal address of our Metasploitable server. So now we go back to our security policy. We don't have any inbound traffic, um, uh, inbound security policy allowing incoming traffic. So we need to create that policy first. I'll call this one incoming. The incoming interface would be our internet facing interface and our outgoing interface, the DMZ interface source would be all and the destination is going to be our visual IP object. There's no net here because the visual IP itself is a translation method. Allowing all traffic to this visual IP object. And now this time we get to test from, from the server outside, from this PC outside. We have internet connection here. Let's see if we can ping and reach the FortiGate gate 10.160.10.254. The FortiGate gate is reachable. How about dot one hundred? Dot one hundred is reachable, and we know dot one hundred translates to our internal metasploitable server. I'm going to leave this running, and I'm going to access the same um, via the browser. 10.160.10.100 and there is our Metasploitable server. Now let's go back to the footy gate and look at our session table. The entries would be a little bit more interesting this time. So looking at our session table, we can see the source is 10.110.10 and let's actually double check on here. Our IP address is 10.110.10. .10. We see that as a source and it's being translated to or destination translated to 172.160.10, which is the IP address of our Mirror Spreadable server. So this is how the, the virtual IP works. So another way of implementing um, virtual IPs is with port address translations. So what, what I mean by that is we have, let's say, let's assume, for instance, we have only one IP address that we can present outside and we want to forward traffic to that IP address to different servers internally. The way we do that is using port forwarding. So say, for instance, we enable port forwarding here and let's say a person coming from outside, we want to access the web server, web services on this, on the server. What we would do is define an outside port that would be mapped to the inside port. We know that this server is listening on port 80, but what we present outside would be, um, let's say a different port, let's say um, 3080. So we would say from outside, you would connect to 3080 and we would map that to port 80 when the traffic is being translated to this internal server. So we don't need to change our inbound security policy. We've just modified our, our visual IP. So let's review this again. What, what this means is that we'll have incoming traffic from everywhere out there on the internet and with the destination of our visual IP. Our visual IP is now saying, um, 
anything that accesses the 10.160.10.100 will be mapped to the IP address of our metaspreadable server. If the if the destination port on the outside is 3080, it'll be mapped to port 80 internally. Let's put it to the test. So um, interestingly, what you would notice here as well is that this this would not work anymore. Even if we try port 80, the firewall will drop that. But if we try to connect to port 3080, then this would work. And now that we're connected, let's go back to the firewall, just validate our output again. All right, we see a single entry there where traffic is coming in from 10.100.10, which we know to be a, a resource um, or a computer out on the internet. And it's coming in onto 10.160.10.100.30.80. And it's being forwarded to the IP address of our metaspreadable server on destination port 80. This is pretty much how it works. And the last net config that I want to demonstrate, which is also very intuitive, is still using IP pools. With IP pools, we defined our SNET pool as um, overload, but we can easily change this to say we want this to be one to one. And when you make this one to one, it's essentially a single IP address um, on the outside, 10.160.10.10. .10. And we apply that. I guess it would make sense if you say where the source is not everything from this incoming interface where here you would need to define your source. And in this case, our source would be our metaspreadable server, which we would have to create an object for. And now we have a one-to-one -one mapping. To access the internet, our MSF server with 172.160.10 would be translated using 10.160.10.10 net address on the outside. Let's give that a test again. And let's again look at our session table. So we can see our outbound traffic from 172.160.10 and it's been mapped to 172.160.10.10. .10. And that concludes our short demonstration of our network address translation configs on the 40 gate. See you next time.